Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into the Canton Ice House for Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Playoff Hockey on HCAM. Tom Nappy alongside Eric Carty, John Ritz on camera. And tonight, the Hopkinton Hillers take on Silver Lake. The Hillers are the one seed in the South Division III bracket with a 19-1-0 record. Silver Lake is the 17th seed with a 10-9-2 record. Silver Lake took down Holliston in the preliminary round, 5-2 to advance to this game. But Eric, as we have seen in the past, seeding just does not matter in this bracket. Literally anything can happen. No, you're right, Tom. It uh, comes playoff time. To me, I'm probably a little biased. There's nothing like playoff hockey. It's, it's all about getting the momentum and playing your game. So the Hillers have uh, been on a great run, on a great historic season at 19-1. and one. Uh, so there's no reason. They had a little bit of a layoff, but uh, coaches have kept busy with some scrimmages and other things. So there's no reason they can't come out and maintain the way they've been playing all year long. And of course, the Hillers were red hot pretty much all season long, finishing 19-1-0 overall. Silver Lake finished 10-9-2. But Silver Lake, they've beaten some very tough competition. They entered the playoffs last year, 8-10-4, and, and gave 12 seeded Dartmouth all they could handle in a 5-4 overtime loss for Silver Lake. As for the Hopkinton Hillers, of course, they went all the way to the state championship where they fell to a good Wachusett team in the state finals. And Hopkinton and Silver Lake, they do have some history. They last met in the 2017 playoffs, and it did not go so well for Silver Lake. The Hillers dominated that game 9-1, to and they're certainly hoping for a similar result here tonight. Well, we are just about ready for the opening introductions as well as the national anthem. So without further ado, we will send it down to rinkside for the opening announcements. Thank you. 
Hockey on H Cam is underway as Silver Lake starts off in the Hillers defensive zone along the near side. We go trying to dig it out as Rogers. He will pass to Walsh. Here comes Walsh racing up the ice, takes a shot, and it's just a little bit wide as Gilbert will grab it along the near side. Gilbert sends it around over to the corner. Along the far side boards now, pass Aparoshitz, breakaway, Silver Lake sends it out, shot, turned away by Bailey. It was a good feed from Guilford to Mason, but turned away. And now here comes Hamblet racing up. He'll take a shot, and that's Sinai. Rogers getting in there. Hamblet with the backhanded pass over to Rogers in the corner, or Quinlan in the corner, excuse me. Kirk trying to dig it out. Out towards Quinlan along the near side. And Mansur will send it around. Hamlet races in there, able to backhand the puck around the boards. Pavit Mira takes it out. There's a shot, turned away. A bit of a misfire there. Over to Kirk, and he was looking to feed Quinlan right in front of the net. Jammed up along the corner. And there's a shot by Mansur that's turned away. Some power on that one from Manser. And here comes Manser with the pass up towards Kirk. Silver Lake making a change. The Lakers of Silver Lake, the 17th seeded Silver Lake Lakers, and they have certainly been battle tested. They play a lot of playoff caliber teams throughout the regular season. And in this bracket, of course, anything's possible. And after the opening faceoff, uh, Silver Lake getting it in the Hilla zone. The Hillas have been dominating for the last couple shifts here. Here comes Carnarelli. He'll backhand it up the ice. Over to the corner it goes. Barnes trying to dig it out. Sends it along the far side towards Weinstock. Racing in there is Carnarelli, the captain 
And Weinstock able to get it across. Sent down by Walsh, an offsides call. Well, the Hill is looking good so far, Tom. Had a couple good chances, uh, keeping the play down low. They had a couple of chances, a couple of blocks, and Tommy Hamill with a nice rush, making a break at the blue line, get a good shot on net. This faceoff comes with 12.34 left to go in the first period. Scoreless so far in this playoff game. And looks like uh, Solari got kicked out of the faceoff. Hamblett sends it around. Gilbert going to track it down along the corner. We'll wrap it around towards the far side. Backhanded pass by Nate Johnson. Here comes Silver Lake. Racing up the ice, Solari, and he runs into Gilbert. Out in front it goes, and here comes Hamblett. Hamblett. Along the near side, sends it out to Rogers. There's a shot, and he's denied. Getting his body right in front of that one was Solari. And all the way down into the Hiller's end it goes. Gray Bailey will wrap it up. And Silver Lake looking like they have some good speed, so the Hiller's defense have got to be careful at the top there. They want to make sure they get those pucks in low and not hit the shin pads and send them the other way like that. Face off in the Hiller's end, comes with 12 minutes left to go in the first period. John Walsh in on the face off for Hopkinton. Along the near side. Up and around it goes, taking a hit into the boards was Manser. Seamus trying to dig it out. There's an attempted shot by Generazzo, turned away by Rogers. Seamus takes a big hit into the corner. And we have a whistle. Yeah, I think he's going to go for a boarding there. A little bit too much on that from the, the back. So the Hillers will be on the power play. That is certainly what you like if you want to get some momentum going. And that's Bobby Guilford, one of the key scorers on Silver Lake. Point leaders for Silver Lake. You got Aiden Dunphy with 14, Nick Solari with 10, Bobby Guilford with 10, and Kevin Cartarelli with 15. And it looks like we'll have a redo on the faceoff. Hill is going to go with their power play package with Walsh quarterbacking the point. And four forwards. Point leaders for the Hillers Kyle Rogers, 49, Sean Walsh, 58, Tommy Hamblett, 44. Some impressive numbers. By the Hillers, Gilbert takes a shot out in front of the net, loose puck, and Hamlet was trying to get it across, and the goaltender was just able to knock it to the back. Walsh sends it up, looking for Mara, and we get an offside. That puck was awfully close to going in time. I think it was just laying there, and unfortunately, Hamlet was taken down from behind before he could get a stick on it, or he would have had an easy tap in there. Rogers getting kicked out of the faceoff. It will be Walsh. He'll make that Hamlet. Hamlet up against Mason. Excuse me, Mara was on the faceoff. Sends it over. Up and around it goes. Hamlet trying to get there. Over to Walsh. Sends it across. Gilbert on the one timer, a misfire. Rogers digs it out of the corner. Back to Rogers now. Looking for a shot, lifts it, and it was just a little off the mark there. Mara sends it over to Walsh. Back to Mara. Mara racing in. He'll take a shot. It'll go out of play off the protective netting. And Silver off Lake, the goaltender and out. Silver Lake doing a good job of keeping the pucks to the outside there. The hill is going to have to be quick. They're going to have to move that puck quickly because Silver Lake has been real fast in getting to them getting the sticks on the puck. 119 left on the Hillers power play. Had a lot of uh, guys kicked out of faceoffs tonight so far. Yeah, I think the referees are taking it to a different level for the playoffs. <laughs> Hamlet back to Mara. There's a shot turned away. Loose puck out in front. And it's sent down. Able to get there was Generazzo for Silver Lake. Gilbert with possession behind the net, sends it up towards Walsh, will pop it off the boards to Rogers. And here comes Rogers. He'll wrap it around towards Mara. Mara goes between the legs to Rogers. Looking for Mara. Walsh 
Back to Mara. Mara takes a shot, turned away. Over towards the official it goes. Grady Sullivan has been busy in net so far for Silver Lake. Hamlet out in front. There's a shot by Gilbert, and it's going to be wrapped up. Yeah, some good looks for the Hillers there. It looks like uh, Sullivan's doing a good job in that there. Looks like the Hillers gonna have to try to get a little bit more traffic in front to get some screens on him because he's a solid goaltender so far in this period. Well, he's only given up 39 goals this season. And he's played the majority of games. And Silver Lake as a team, they only give up on average about two goals a game. So impressive numbers there. Manser sends it over to Jarrett. Jarrett will wrap it around. Manser trying to dig it out of the near side boards as well as Quinlan. Quinlan back towards Manser and around it goes. Weinstock and the net became dislodged. We'll have a face off at 9.54 left to go. Silver Lake employing a real aggressive forecheck. They're really going off to the hill as they you know, if they let him sit there and move the puck with the hill of speed, they're going to get around. So the hill is going to have to try to work in around an aggressive penalty kill here. 15 seconds left on the Hiller's power play. Kirk sends it back. Jarrett thinking about a shot, takes one. It's wrapped up. Sullivan with another nice save for the Lakers. Dan Kirk on the faceoff for Hopkinton. Sends it back, Jarrett. Over to the corner. Out in front, he was looking for a wine stock. A nice idea by Kirk, but Silver Lake read it nicely. There's a shot turned away. That was off the stick of Cartarelli. Another good save by Bailey. Silver Lake trying to put some pressure on. Mansur with a misfire. He'll pop it off the boards. Over to Jarrett it goes. Jarrett swings it around to the near side. Pass from the blue line there by Aiden Dunphy. There's a shot turned away. Another great save by Bailey off the stick of Armstrong. Jarrett digs it out of the far side corner and sends it up the ice. The power play has expired. Nine minutes and counting left to go in the first period. We are scoreless in a back and forth battle so far between Hopkinton and Silver Lake. Terry sends it over. Here comes Sheamus, he'll pop it off the boards. Over to Aiden Walsh, racing up the ice. A mishandle there, he'll send it around. Carraza gets in there. And that hit past Sheamus into the Hiller's defensive end. Barnes takes a hard hit into the corner. Sheamus sends it back. Aiden Walsh trying to deliver a hit of his own. And it's popped up by Terry into the Silver Lake territory as the Hillers make a change. First line back out on the ice for Hopkinton. The Silver Lake trying to do it with a body now, Tom. I think they're going to try to wear the Hillers down. Over to the neutral zone. Solari sends it up. Gilbert will catch up with it. Gilbert, backhanded pass to Walsh. There goes Walsh. And Walsh is misdirected into the corner. Walsh trying to get it out of the traffic jam. Hamblet gets in there as well, and he'll take a hit from Guilford. Trying to dig it out. Along the near side now, Mason. Silver Lake racing in to Hiller's territory, and Saparoshitz. With a nice deny of Bobby Guilford. Saparoshitz. Backhanded pass towards Rogers. And he gets by him into Silver Lake territory. Along the near side now. Here comes Rogers and Mira. Mira racing up, takes a shot. It's off the protective netting. We'll have a face off along the near side in Silver Lake defensive territory. Well, the first goal in any game is always big, but when you get to the playoffs like this, Tommy, you get teams that are pretty evenly matched so far. Getting that first goal goes a long way here, so the Hillers would like to pop one in here. The winner of this game advances to play at a time to be determined on Sunday 
right back here at the Canton Ice House. Dan Kirk in on the faceoff for the Hillers. Mara trying to send it forward. And here comes Silver Lake once again. And sending it up and around is Sampson. Over to the corner it goes. Sheamus sends it back. Sent forward by Manser. Here comes Quinlan. He'll send it around. Both teams just kind of feeling each other out right now. As Mara trying to leave it out in front. Now trying to wrap it around, and it's turned away. And there's a Manser sending it over. He's looking for Sheamus. Backhanded pass over to the corner. Mara picks it up. Takes a hit into the boards. Sticking with it. Another Hiller gets in there as well. There's Quinlan joining in on the fun. Sheamus pops it up. Up and around it goes. Mira going to send it back and take a big hit. And now a nice steal attempt by Carraza. Diverts the puck away from Silver Lake. And a traffic jam along the far side boards. And we're going to get a whistle. Pavit Mira was desperately trying to get off the ice but got caught up in the action. And are we going to have some type of violation here? I don't think they're going to give them the, too many men on the ice. Unfortunate because they were all going off and Puck ended up right over there in their feet. Don't know that anyone really played it, but. I don't know if they will. I think it was just a situation of circumstance, but. Yeah. yeah, it looks like they will. So they're going to send Pavit Mera to the box. I don't agree with that call. No, it's, it's, no, it's normally if the, someone comes off the bench and intentionally plays the puck. And certainly no one was intentionally playing there. If it ain't, they get bounced off of errant foot. Walsh up against Guilford. Silver Lake on the power play. And that one's wristed into the glass behind the net. Sent up by Rogers. Silver Lake has killed off a power play successfully in this first period. Can the Hillers? Up the far side towards Mason. And sent back down. Rogers along the defensive end. Here comes Silver Lake up the near side, Generazzo. Generazzo pops it around. Over the corner it goes. Backhanded pass by Mason. A big hit delivered in the corner on Jarrett. And there's a shot turned away. Another good save there by Bailey off the stick of Mason. And now over to Generazzo. He'll send it back to the far side. Another shot turned away. Along the corner now. That last shot was by Dunphy. Hand up along the corner, sent back by Barnes. And now a dive by Generazzo to try to keep it in Hillary's territory. But Rogers had something to say about that. Here comes Sean Walsh. Walsh racing around, turning on the wheels. And he got a shot off. It was turned away. I think he was looking for Rogers. He had Rogers out front, almost got, a, got to it. I don't, yeah, I don't know if he was going for the net there or just trying to hit Rogers. Hillers, so far so good on this Silver Lake power play. 25 seconds left to go on the power play. 426 and counting left in the first period. Along the near side off of Sampson. The roll back to the Hillers net. Gray Bailey will cover it up. And one good chance by you know, the Lakers and Gray, Gray Bailey came up great with a nice kick save. No rebound in front. This face off comes at four minutes, 20 seconds left. 16 seconds left on the power play. Kirkin on the face off that time as Wolf takes a stab at it, sends it to the backboards. And now doing battle is Gilbert trying to get to the puck along with Solari. Solari sends it down over to Wolf. And Wolf denied by Quinlan. They were out of the box. Here comes Kirk. He'll send it up the far side boards. Picked up by Solari. The power play has expired. We are back at even strength. And that's popped up in the air. Pulled down by Kirk. Gets a shot off. Turned away. Caught up with by Sampson. Now, here comes Mara. Mara's looking for Carraza. So far, a defensive affair between these two very good teams. And we'll have a whistle here for Isaac. 
Yeah, looks like uh, Silver Lake is there in style of play here is going to be trying to take the body on the hill as every chance they get. They know this got a speedy team and they're going to try to wear them down just by pounding them into the board. So the Hillers are going to have to keep their heads up, make some quick moving passes, try to avoid those checks. And there's a quick shot, turned away, secondary shot by Amblin is turned away as well. Nearly had it. Wall sends it out, back into Rogers, goal! Hillers up, one nothing. Kyle Rogers! Just a great play from right off the face off. Sean Walsh with a great move, got the initial shot, went wide, but was able to go in, retrieve that puck, and he always seems to get that puck right on Kyle Rogers' stick out front. The Tri-Valley MVP, and that's why he was chosen. Certainly well deserved. The goal comes with 3.15 left to go in the first period. Kyle Rogers with his 27th goal of the season and 50th point. Sean Walsh with his 36th assist and 59th point. Sheamus sends it over to Rogers. And shouts of MVP from the crowd there. <laughs> Walsh maneuvering by a couple of defenders. Along the near side, trying to send it out. Takes a hit into the corner. Out in front, Rogers looking for the shot. High slot, got it! Kyle Rogers does it again! <laughs> well, this line is definitely the top line of the league. And all All-Stars, and they're showing it here tonight. They just know how to play with each other, find each other great. And Kyle Rogers, one of the best shots we've going. Two nothing, Hillers, 2.53 left to go in the first period. And we'll see uh, how this will change the approach of Silver Lake. Kyle Rogers, two tremendous goals. Dan Kirk up against Nick Solari. And the official positioning the players along the faceoff. They're certainly being picky about that here in this postseason. Left out for Wolf. Sends it up, nearly stolen away by Kirk. He's able to get it to Nugent. Sent back down by Jarrett. Quinlan turns it around, sends it over to the far side. Mara racing in. He's diverted. Not sure. That should have been icing. That well, the puck was well behind the red line. Yeah, they missed one there. Barnes catches up with it. We get a whistle here. Yeah, now it's going to turn into a hiller penalty. How unfortunate there. That puck was at least eight feet behind the red line. Well, they're going to get Jarrett for an elbow. So Silver Lake will have the man advantage for the next two minutes. The Hillers have the 2-0 score advantage. 2.23 left to go in the period. Big kill here for the Hillers. You don't want to give up that momentum after getting two quick ones. Caught up with by Rogers, who will send it down. Along the corner. Silver Lake trying to attack. Here comes Mason. Racing in, trying to get by Saparoshitz. Walsh steals it away. Here goes Walsh. Breakaway potential. Racing up the ice, takes the shot, and it is diverted. Defenseman just got to stick on that, send it out of play. Faceoff should remain in their end. Tommy Hamlet also credited with an assist. That's his 27th, 45th point on the season for Hamlet. How impressive is that for the Hillers to have three guys with 40 plus points? Yeah, they, they've just been incredible all year long. If the Bruins have a uh, perfection line, well, this is the uh, Tri Valley Elite line. <laughs> Wolf sends it out to Rogers, and he nearly stuffed it in. Gilbert sends it up to the corner. Picked up by Mason. And Walsh just dominating the offensive faceoffs, getting good chances off them. Cartarelli sends it up the ice. Silver Lake trying to attack and take advantage of their power play opportunity as the puck was knocked out of play along the far side. Over the Hillers bench it went, and we'll have a faceoff in the neutral zone. Dan Kirk in there for the Hillers, up against Cartarelli. 
Picked up by Solari, sends it over to Wolf. Past the reach of Solari, he'll pick it up off the rebound. Pops it off the boards, Quinlan sends it back. Kirk trying to get in there, he's tripped up. And now Quinlan was trying to get to the puck and it was a couple of players tripped up and this one sent sky high at a play from Solari as his stick got tangled up with Saporosha. Yeah, Saporosha has got a good, good stick in there to get that puck. No good shot on that there, send that out. So Hill is looking good so far on this penalty kill. And the big face off win here. Dan Kirk up against Bobby Guilford on the faceoff. Quinlan trying to sneak it up, sends it down. 35 seconds and counting left on the Silver Lake power play. Picked up by Dunphy. Dunphy pops it over to Generazzo. And now it's back to Mason. Sends it over, and a nice diversion there by Manser. Yeah, nice play by Manser there. Another defense playing really well with some good stick checks. Guilford lost it, but it is picked up by his fellow teammate. And here comes Dunphy. And he'll get tangled up along the far side. Kirk taking the body well there, knocking right off the puck. And the power play has expired. 22 seconds left to go in the first period. Hiller's leading 2 to nothing. Over to the near side. Manser gets a stick on it. Rogers was looking for a breakaway opportunity there. Sheamus, Hamlet, sends it up. Battle along the far side, back and forth we go. Sheamus to Hamlet, and he pops it over to the corner, and that is how the first period will end. Two quick goals by none other than Kyle Rogers to make it two to nothing. And that was a good defensive first period by the Hillers, but of course, those two goals were certainly something as well. Yeah, just a clinic, they just click on all cylinders that first line there. And I'm sure Silver Lake came into this knowing they had to shut this line down, and they did for the most part of the period, but uh, now that they're firing on all cylinders here, that's look out. Second period coming up next. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Playoff Hockey on HCAN. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. Welcome back into the Canton Ice House. We are just about ready for the second period. And as we enter the second frame, it's a 2-0 lead for the Hillers. Kyle Rogers scored the first goal of the game with 3.15. Left to go in the first period, assisted by Sean Walsh and Tommy Hamblett. And then Kyle Rogers did it again, just over 20 seconds later, with a beauty of a shot to make it a 2-0 game. And oh, by the way, the Hillers will be on the power play to start this second period. At least according to the scoreboard, they have Tyler Mason up there, and he is skating over towards the penalty box now. So the Hiller is going to be on a power play right off the bat in the second period. It doesn't get any better than that, Eric. Yeah, I mean, both teams should take note here. I mean, the, the referees are not going to let anything go here that after the whistle or any of those shenanigans here. So they got a good chance here to take advantage of this opportunity here to start right off the bat here. Tom Nappy, Eric Cardi on the call. John Ritz on camera. As we are ready to go in this second period, Pavit Mira out there in the circle for the moment, and it looks like he'll be taking the opening face-off against Kevin Cardarelli. And we are underway in the second frame. The Hillers trying to advance on a play Sunday right back here at the Canton Ice House. On the far side, Gilbert, here he comes. And he's turned away, but Walsh is there to back him up. Sends it over to Mara. Mara leaves it behind for Hamlet. Over to Gilbert. Gilbert looking for a shot. And it is going to be just off the mark. Turned away, I believe it was off of the leg of Wolf. And there's a shot by Walsh that goes behind the net. 
Picked up by Hamlet, trying to dig it out of the corner. Walsh. And he'll take another shot turned away. Over in the corner, Hamlet. Hamlet looking towards Walsh, sends it up another, to Mara. Another penalty coming up, Tom. On five on three here. Well, the Hiller is going to have a big advantage now. What'd you see? Uh, looked like a hook in front. Uh, great play there by Walsh. He took a nice low shot with a purpose of looking for a rebound, and there was a good rebound, but just out of the reach of Kyle Rogers there. He had a lot of net to shoot at, but just couldn't get it there. Gregory Wolf heads to the box for Silver Lake, and the Hillers have a two-man advantage for the next minute and four seconds. And then for 56 seconds after that, they'll still have a man advantage. Zara Hamblin sends it around. Gilbert picks it up. Out to Walsh. Over to Mara. Mara to Gilbert. Gilbert along the near side. Sends it over to Rogers. Back to the blue line of Gilbert. Now to Rogers. Cross to Mara. Nice pass there. Out in front. Hamlet with the backhander turned away. Good idea by Hamlet, but nice defensive play there by Silver Lake. Blocked that pass. 30 seconds left on one of the power plays. Walsh racing up the near side. Sends it back, looking for Gilbert. Good play by Gilbert to keep that in. Certainly was. Mara now along the far side. Takes the shot, and it's turned away. Up behind the net it goes, around the boards. Gilbert trying to dig it out. He'll meet up with Solari. And there's a quick shot by Rogers. Wide left. Mara picks it up. Trying to jam it in the side of the net, but the goaltender was ready for it. Rogers out to Walsh. 45 seconds left on the man advantage. That's turned away by the defender. Along the far side now. Nice job by Dunphy getting his body in front of that Walsh attempt. Walsh sends it up, and here comes Silver Lake trying to establish an attack. Solari, and he meets up with Gilbert along the near side. And the hills, and hills are going to go here for a trip, and I think it was Rogers got to stick in. Well, got handle it. We will be at even strength for 23 seconds, and then Silver Lake will have the man advantage for a minute 37 after that. Tommy Hamblett takes a seat in the penalty box. Well, Silver Lake with a good job on that five on three kill. It didn't give the Hillers any real good shots inside. They kept the puck outside most of that power play. Dan Kirk up against Guilford. And that's past the reach of Cavici. Here comes Quinlan racing up the near side. Takes a shot, turned away. Picks it up behind the net and takes it around and Cavici gets there. Ricci sends it over. Up and around it goes. Kirk trying to get there. Now a traffic jam along the near side boards as Guilford trying to dig it out. Kirk racing up the ice, takes it into the corner. Hill is now on the kill, so Kirk looking to lead the clock down. Racing up Guilford. And a nice turn away there by Mansur as it's sent back up the ice. Silver Lake with the man advantage for a minute 13 and counting. Along the near side, sent down by Manser. Generazzo trying to pick it up. Only a, about a minute left on the power play now. A lot of time wasted by Generazzo behind the net. Sent over to the near far side and Jarrett will turn it away. And now here comes Rogers on a break, up the ice, takes the shot. Turned away. Rogers along the corner. And he meets up with Dilly. Here comes Silver Lake. And Guilford's turned away. Nice job by Barnes getting the stick in there. And the Hill's defense all night long, Tom. Great with the sticks at the blue line, breaking up the offensive plays. Barnes tracking it down in the corner up against Sampson. Sends it around to Jarrett. Jarrett. Up into Silver Lake territory, and it'll reach the stick of the goaltender, Grady Sullivan. 
Eight seconds left on the Silver Lake power play. Hiller is about to kill off their second power play of the game. Barnes and Jarrett with a great defensive shift out here. And they've killed off the power play, but Silver Lake racing into Hiller's territory. Jarrett gets there to cut off Solari. Sends it up off the stick of Hamblett. Hamblett fresh out of the penalty box. Dunphy sends it up. Kirk trying to get in there for a steal. Barnes picks it up. Big hit by Jarrett there. Quinlan just passed the reach of Mara. He certainly was. And Solari still looks shook up. Got a few big hits in this game. It's been a physical one. Dunphy trying to chase it down. Saporosha sends it back. Back into Hiller's territory it goes. Nice. Bailey will let it be for the icing. Oh no. We're going to have a penalty, it looks like. For a high stick. Missed that one. And it's going to be against Quinlan. So Silver Lake back on the power play. Nice stick against Quinlan, and Silver Lake will have the man advantage for the next two minutes. 9.46 left to go in this second period. Sean Walsh up against Kevin Cardarelli. Wrapped up by Bailey. Not taking any chances there. Walsh and Cartarelli will do it once again. Great crowd on hand here at the Canton Ice House today from both sides. Walsh racing up the ice. Here he goes. Turning on the burners, trying to get it over to Rogers, and it's turned away. Pass the reach of Saporoshitz. Saporoshitz is able to get a bit of the stick on it, but Sampson able to cut it off as putting in the corners Gilbert. Trying to get it out of the traffic jam. Saporoshitz sends it forward. It looks like we're going to have another penalty here for slashing. And it's going to be against the Hillers. Gilbert's going to the box. Two-man advantage for Silver Lake. And this is not the situation you want to be in if uh, you're off. This is a crucial juncture for the Hillers. You get up 2 nothing, you get all the momentum on your side. Start the period with a power play, and then just three straight penalties of your own is... Big momentum killer. Got to kill this off and then get back in it and stay out of the box. Walsh up against Guilford. And these officials, they're not going to let you get away with anything today. Seamus trying to dig it out. Sends it around. Great job by Seamus. Dunphy. Sends it back up. Now it's back to Dunphy. Along the corner, racing in, Rister goal! Tyler Mason makes it a two to one game. Nice shot there, I think he caught Gray Bailey leaning just a little bit, it looked like he was gonna go for the pass, but they will snap it off and just found the corner. That goal comes with 8.57 left to go in the second period. And Silver Lake will still have a man advantage. Well, the Hillers have killed off a couple of power plays successfully today, but when you're down two men, that is just a very difficult task, especially against a team with speed such as Silver Lake. Over to the near side, Dunphy. Taken by Walsh, racing up the ice. Shot, turn away. Another good save by Sullivan. Walsh was going for the five hole there. Yeah, a little sloppy play in their own end by Silver Lake. Switch with Walsh out there. Took advantage of it. Picked up by Mason, picked up by Generazzo. He'll send it out. Sheamus cuts it off. Pops it off the near side boards. Goes squirting all the way to the far side. Rogers trying to get there. The two of his bounce there for the Hillers. That one came out at a 45 degree angle. Sheamus racing up the ice. Takes a <laughs> shot, no! Ronnie Sheamus! What a beautiful play there by Sheamus. Came down the boards to keep that puck in. Saw that he had a lane and went in, and he snapped that thing top corner. That goal comes with 8-11 left to go in the second. The Hillers have had some big shorthanded goals this year, Tom. None bigger than that right now to break Silver Lake's momentum here. And guess what? That was the first goal of the season for Ronnie Sheamus. Yeah. I don't think you could ask for that at a better time. Came with a great time. Just a great play. Smart play. He saw the opening, took it, and let that puck rip. First goal of the season for Sheamus. Eighth point overall. 
50 seconds left on the Silver Lake power play as the Hillers score a shorthanded goal, courtesy of Ronnie Sheamus with a beauty of a shot. Puts it right into the top portion of the net. Sends it over to the far side. Picked up by Wolf. He'll pop it off the boards. Jarrett trying to turn it around and will do so. Wolf sends it back. Quinlan gets the stick in there. Along the near side now. Picked up by Sampson. He'll send it over. Jarrett. Hill has not even let Silver Lake get over their own uh, blue line. And his kill. And the power play has expired. 7-17 and counting left to go in the period. A 3-1 Hillers lead. Walsh sends it back and it's picked up by Wolf. And now it's stolen away by Rogers. Here he comes. Rogers leaves it for Walsh. Shot goal! Sean Walsh does it again! What a play there. Sean Walsh with a beautiful goal by Kyle Rogers at the neutral zone. Made a neat little move to get that puck away from Silver Lake. Came in and slipped a pass to the leading Walsh right under the legs of the defenseman. And Walsh put it home. Well, Walsh has assisted Rogers today. And now Rogers assists Walsh. And makes it a 4-1 to one game with 7.03 left to go in the second period. And some spectacular passing and shooting on display here. 24th goal of this season by Sean Walsh. 60th point. Kyle Rogers with his 24th assist. Gilbert along the near side. Racing up the ice. Here he goes. Turning on the burners. Takes a shot. Turned away. Hamlet picks it up. Sends it forward. Rogers over to Walsh. Out in front. Looking for Hamlet. And now here comes Silver Lake. But Gilbert has something to say about that as he's able to knock it away from Johnson. Up behind the net it goes, picked up by Generazzo. Past the reach of Armstrong. Sheamus wraps it around. Silver Lake trying to get their composure after giving up two more quick goals in this one. And that's popped off the glove of Bailey out of play. Well, Hill is doing a good job of seizing the momentum right back, and those two goals have really put a spark on him now. Is doing some great forechecking. Is that what they call a punch save? <laughs> waffle. That's what the old school is the waffle. <laughs> Just punch for the, the, for the puck blocker. Away. <laughs> you can't punch other people in high school hockey, so you'll punch the puck. Kirk up against Guilford, and now he gets kicked out. It'll be Mara. And a quick shot there by Silver Lake, wrapped up by Gray Bailey. Well, the faceoff at 6.04 left to go in the second period. Sent around by Manser. Along the far side boards it goes, and we'll have an icing. This faceoff comes with 5.58 left to go in the period. Well, big congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team. A very impressive start to their postseason. 59-55 win over first seeded Grafton on Thursday night. And they advance on to the semifinals. Sent around, Sheamus picks it up on the far side corner. Looking for a shot here, turned away by Bailey. And a pretty good shot there by Guilford. Guilford racing out. Mary got a stick in there. Sheamus cuts it off, sends it over to the far side. Quinlan up the ice to Kirk. Now to Mira. Here comes the speedster. Racing in, turned away. Getting the stick in there was Del Delnickis. A couple of nice moves by Mira, but just couldn't get the puck after he slipped it through. And now Barnes trying to steal it away and will do so. Sends it over to Jarrett. Now to Kirk. Off his stick it goes. Kirk trying to pick it up. And you get a whistle here. And what could this possibly be? It's calling a slash. Question is, who is it on? I think it's going to be on Silver Lake. I 
believe you are correct. Five oh seven left to go in the second period. And now we have our guilty party skating over to the penalty box. It's Bobby Guilford. Hillers with the man advantage for the next two minutes. Harris sends it to the corner. Sent away by Wolf. Walsh takes a shot, turn away. Mara, back to Walsh. Back to Mara. Takes a shot and a goal! Wow, Bobbitt Mara! Grady Sullivan didn't have a chance with that one. No, and credit Hamlet and Rogers in front. They created some good traffic. The uh, Silver Lake goalie was struggling to see that puck coming through. A 5-1 to one Hillers lead with 4.48 left to go in the second period and the 13th goal of the season for Pavit Mera. So again, the Hill is doing it every way. They've had uh, even strength goals, shorthanded goals, power play goals. And there's the, he's a freshman champ. Well, he certainly doesn't play like most freshmen, no, I'll tell you a, that. He's a well-seasoned freshman. <laughs> Barnes sends it over the corner. We'll get a whistle. Yeah, the Hill of shots, Hill of shots tonight, Tom, have just been lasers. Uh, top corners and Walsh between the legs, they, they've oh. just on fire with the placement of the puck tonight. I mean, they're playing against a good goaltender. They are. He's yeah. only given up 39 goals all season. And Silver Lake for the first three quarters of the first period did a great job keeping pucks out. Shot turned away off a number of Hillers. Sean Walsh did indeed get credited with the assist on the Marigold. That's his fourth point of the game. Right, that is third point. So he's up to 61 overall. Along the far side. Poked out by Jarrett. Here comes Weinstock racing up the ice. Along the near side, Aiden Walsh racing in to back him up. Sent down by Cotterelli. Up and around it goes. Jarrett pops it forward. Nice play by Jarrett, get that puck right out. And now it's sent down by Solari, who pays for it with a big hit from Weinstock. Aiden Walsh now racing up the ice. Here he goes, Weinstock, shot, and a misfire there, turned away. And almost played in his favor as the goalie almost drifted over too far. He did not get as much as he wanted on that one. Off of Carraza, now Silver Lake maybe with an opportunity, offsides. And uh, Quinlan was tripped up. We'll have a face off at 3.48 left to go in the second period. Well, it's amazing how things can turn around quickly for this Hillers hockey team. At one point they were facing a two-man deficit and Silver Lake netted a goal to make it a game once again, a two to one game at the time, and then the Hillers respond with three quick goals of their own. Yeah, great thing about this team is there's no panic at all. They just play their game. Mara, backhander into the corner. They always seem to uh, look cool and collected out there for the most part. Here comes Silver Lake. Nice move there. Can he get the shot off? No, cut off by Gilbert. The stick went about 15 feet in the air. Gilbert delivering a hit and takes a pop along the near side. Mara trying to dig it out from along the boards. Quinlan gets the stick in there as well. Mara takes a pop from Cavici. And up to the Hiller zone it goes. Gilbert will pick it up. Sends it over to Mara. Three minutes and counting left to go in the second period. Popped off the glass by Cavici. And now there's a quick shot and it is going to be turned away. And a lot on that too. Just sail high. Cartarelli had all kinds of gas on that one. At the Silver Lake now, Tom, they're just, uh, Hill is doing a great job limiting their chances. Uh, these chances that they're taking are from well outside. Sean Walsh up against Kevin Cartarelli. Sent up and around. Caught up with by Nate Johnson. Sends it over to the corner. 
Walsh gets the stick in there. Now sent over by Manser, looking for Hamlet. Now here comes Walsh on a potential break, and he lost it. Turned around by Dumphy. Sheamus sends it over, turned away. Picked up by Delnickis. Over to Armstrong. Armstrong sends it back, and uh, another punch save there by Bailey off the stick of Cotterelli. Along the far side corner it goes. Walsh trying to get the stick in there, turned away for the moment by Sheamus. And then a diverted shot off the stick of Dunphy. And there's a goal! And he's got caught just a little bit running around there, couldn't get the puck down and left, left him wide open in the corner. Another good shot. Well, they kept at it with the pressure, and Nate Johnson able to find the net for Silver Lake for the second time in the period. With 1.56 left to go in the frame, the Hillers still leading 5-2. to two. We'll see if Hopkinton can respond. Barnes sends it around. Raza trying to pick it up. Raza trying to bring it out. Silver Lake knows they need to keep the pressure on if they want to get back into this game. Jarrett sends it along the near side. And it's picked up by Dunphy. Turned away by Barnes. And now Dunphy takes some contact, sends it forward. Around the boards it goes. Jarrett gets there. Sends it back towards the near side corner. As Barnes was trying to get a stick on it. And the Hiller is trying to attack. Yeah, Barnes with a great play to get that puck out. Here goes Barnes looking for a shot. It's just wide. Barnes racing towards the puck, trying to get it away from Dunphy. And Barnes with a great play there. Forced a turnover, too. Mare up to Quinlan, backhander in the Silver Lake territory under a minute left to play in the second period. Along the near side, here goes Kirk, turn away. Gilbert will pick it up. He'll wrap it around, pass to reach Mera. Over to the corner it goes. And getting out of the jam is Quinlan, and then a shot by Saparosh, it's turned away. Kirk now sends it towards the net, and that'll be diverted. And a Quick release there in the neutral zone by Kelleher. A big hit by Kirk. I think the Silver Lake fans might have been looking for a penalty on that one. Gilbert sends it up. Pass by Cavici to along the far side. And Quinlan trying to race in there. Kirk, can he get a shot off before the buzzer? And he does, but it's wide. Gilbert sends it over. And that'll do it for the second period. Well, it had its ups and downs, but in the end, the Hillers outscore Silver Lake in the second frame, three to two, and they lead it five to two as we head into the final period of this game. Eric, an impressive defensive performance for the most part by the Hillers. There was a couple of moments they seem to take their foot off the gas a little bit. Yeah, great, great period there for the Hillers all in all, but uh, this is a good Silver Lake team. 5-2 is not a comfortable lead, so you can bet Silver Lake's going to come out probably banging bodies first thing. But the Hillers, like I said, they've been patient all year long. They just play their game, and that's what's got them through, and I don't expect them to do anything less. Well, we still have a ways to go. Third period coming up next. The Hillers leading Silver Lake after two. 5-2, to two. you are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Playoff Hockey on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of Naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal Naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining Naloxone is easy. 
you can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Welcome back in to the Canton Ice Arena. And we are just about ready for the third period, a five to two lead for the Hopkinton Hillers. Well, the second period did not start off too well for Hopkinton as Silver Lake made it a two to one game at one point, a goal courtesy of Tyler Mason with 8.57 left to go in the period. But then shortly after that, 46 seconds to be exact, Ronnie Sheamus responds with his first goal of the season. And then Sean Walsh adds another one about a minute after that. And then a couple minutes after that, Pavit Mara adds another one to make it five to one at the time. But Nate Johnson did rack up a goal for Silver Lake towards the end of the period with 156 left. So it is five to two as we head into the final frame here at Warrior Ice Arena in Canton. The Hopkinton Hillers, if they hold on to win this game, they will advance to take on Bishop Stang. The results are in, and it was Bishop Stang getting the win in their playoff game. And a big hit delivered along the far side. And Wolf trying to grab it out of the corner for Silver Lake. Sent up along the near side boards, and we'll get a whistle. And so it's do or die now for Silver Lake. I mean, this is their season on the line, so they're going to be desperate. So for the Hillers, it's just all about composure. No need for them to change the way they've been playing. They just, you know, play their smart offensive game. Well, it looks like they're going to go down a man here. Yeah, Sean Walsh sent to the penalty box. I believe they might have got him for tripping. A big test here early on in the third. Tom Nappy, Eric Cardi, John Ritz on the broadcast today from the Canton Ice House. And I apologize, I said the name of the arena wrong about 10 times. Silver Lake on the power play. Sean Walsh in the box. Picked up by Saparoshitz, he'll send it away. Up and around it goes. And it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, we may have another goal for Silver, goalie for Silver Lake, and we do. We got Peter Bond in net as Ray Bailey will get a wrap on it. And we'll have a faceoff at 14.07 left to go. Well, after Brady Sullivan gave up five goals, I think they just decided to make the change, see if it gets them some momentum. Yeah, I said it's their season on the line, so you got to pull out all the stops here after Silver Lake. Raza on the faceoff, sent forward by Manser. There's a shot diverted by Carraza. Manser trying to dig it out of the corner. Sheamus sends it around. Along the near side boards. Carraza gets in there. And now here comes Sheamus. And Manser and Sheamus, great job on the back end there and that kill, breaking up plays and getting that puck out. Sheamus wraps it around. Less than a minute left to go on the Silver Lake power play. And now we're gonna have a penalty coming up here. It doesn't look like it. Although it'll look like a trip, but that shot turned away. Off the stick of Guilford, another great save by Bailey. Now an opportunity here. What a save by Bailey. Outstanding pad saves. It looked like a wide open look for Dilly, yeah, just but Bailey was just able to slip the leg in there. Great push over to get that second one. Quinlan gets a stick in there. Jarrett picks it up. He'll send it forward. Nice drop by Dunphy. Misfire there as Kirk closes in. Sent down by Barnes. Along the near side, Generazzo. Jarrett trying to steal it away. Takes a hit into the corner from Generazzo. Kirk will knock, or Quinlan will knock it up the ice. And Jarrett and Barnes having just as good as defensive shifts as the last pair. Pass over to Generazzo. Off his stick it goes. Picked up by Jarrett. Walsh back into the game. Power play has expired. 12-27 and County left to go in the third period. The Hillers with a three goal advantage. Up behind the net. 
Back and forth they go, trying to keep it away from Rogers. On the far side now. Here comes Silver Lake, racing up the ice. Nice move there by Armstrong, looking for a shot, but Walsh gets in there with a nice box up. Great defensive play by Walsh on the back check. Hamlet sends it up. Rogers with a potential break. Here he comes, and he takes a hit and sends it wide. Yeah, very well could have been a hook, too, on that play. It probably should have been along the near side. Walsh it sends it around. Great play by Hamlet there just to send that skyward over everybody. Zaporoshit sends it back down. Miller's certainly have been very dominant possession-wise at points in this game. And they are trying to play a little bit of keep away right now and burn some of the time off that clock. Zaporoshitz pops it off the boards towards Rogers. Racing up was Mason. He's cut off by Walsh. And we'll send it up and around. Zaporoshitz takes a hit. Weinstock sends it forward. And now racing up the ice is Weinstock to try to track it down. Sent around by Wolf. Along the near side now. And a good send off there by Gilbert. He will. Head to the bench to take a breather. Stolen away by Mera. Sends it back just past the reach of Aiden Walsh. Set forward by Manser. Peraza looking to get in there. Aiden Walsh gets the stick in there and the steal. Sends it over to Mera. Mera was trying to send it back to Walsh. It was cut off. Big hit delivered by Manser. Mera will wrap it around. Got a play there by Manser just to break that up. Giving him the ice cold shoulder, and it looks like we're going to have a penalty here. Big time collision between Sheamus and Solari. And we'll see what they say about this one. Good but boy, probably going to be a rough. It was a good hit, just got the hands a little bit too high. They're talking about it, and it is going to be Sheamus heading to the box. The Hopkinton fans don't like it much. Hopefully they're not going to go with a five minute here. Usually the hits to the head are five minutes. They are. A five minute major on Ronnie Sheamus. And Silver Lake has a big opportunity here to get back into this game. Yeah, I don't think it quite rose to the level of the vicious hit to the head. He has just came up a little bit, but was not intent. Kind of looked more like incidental contact. Walsh pops it off the far side boards. Racing in there was Barnes. Jammed up along the corner. Solari takes a hit. Out in front, racing in Generazzo. It's going to be very important for the Hillers to stay out of the box while well, this five minute major is in progress. Oh, and they're just on cue. Gonna go for a hold. <laughs> Is that my fault? <laughs> Quentin Barnes going ahead of the box for tripping. It'll be a two-man advantage for the next two minutes, heading a goal for Silver Lake. And of course, the problem here with a five-minute major is that that will be mad if they score on that one, they'll stay in the box. Right. As the... Uh, Las Vegas uh, NHL team learned last year. <laughs> the Golden Knights. Around the boards it goes. Bond gets the stick on it. Silver Lake, they're going to try to score some quick goals and try to get back into this game. Guilford, along the near side, takes a shot, and it is sent a little bit high. Uh, because Silver Lake, that's not what you want to do. You got a five on three and take a shot from up by the blue line. Marazzo sends it over. Hillers will take that all day long. Wrapped around by Mason. Sent back towards Mason. Sends it out to the slot. There's a shot and the wrap by Bailey. It's uh, saved by Bailey. Off the stick of Guilford. Now Silver Lake just, they, they've had nobody in front of the net. They've got a two-man advantage, and they're trying to pass the puck on the outside, but taking the long shots is not going to do it for them. So Hillers just play a good triangle, keep those pucks outside. Faceoff comes at 9.07 left to go 
in the third period. 117 left on the two-man advantage for Silver Lake. 349 left on the five-minute major on Sheamus on the far side. Wolf. Wolf looking for a shot. Turned away. Out in front still. And Bailey able to keep it away for the moment. Wolf sends it over to the corner. Driving around, looking for that open net, and he's got it. Kevin Cartarelli wraps around and makes it a 5-3 game. And Bailey tried to make it over there. Unfortunately, his pad just got angled a bit, and that angle was just enough to let that puck bounce off and go in instead of out. The goal comes with 8.42 left to go in the period. And Silver Lake will still have a man advantage due to the five-minute major for the next three minutes, 27 seconds. This game's not over yet, Eric. No. we has got to get through this and then get back to their four-checking style. Gilbert sends it up the near side. Picked up by Nugent. Sends it across. Looking for an attack there was Cartarelli, but it's sent away by Walsh. And Walsh doing a great job in the back checking tonight, just lift up the stick. And he's one guy that the Hillers really want to stay out of the penalty box. Picked up by Solari. Nick Solari racing up the far side. Walsh gets in there. Looking for a shot, it's high. Along the near side, Wolf sends it over to Nugent. Picked up by Solari. He takes a hit from Saparoshic. And now, here comes Silver Lake once again. A misfire there by Guilford. Nugent will set it up the far side. Walsh racing in, sends it over. Gilbert going to try to pick it out of the corner. 225 and counting left on the five minute major. Rogers. Trying to send it away, and he takes a hit there from Wolf. He's going to go. And he has to go for that. And if they're going to call it the way he did, that look, well, I guess, don't think they're going to call it to the head, although it looked like it was. Well, it looked like he arm barred him in the back. But the Hillers fans looking for the five minute major, and there might have been some head contact, but we'll have to uh, put that on the replay system. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the benefit of seeing that. In slow motion. Uh, I thought at first he did, like he said, he did look like he got some of the shoulder there. It looked like maybe partial. Up to the head. But. Well, anyway, four and four is better for the Hillers than anything. So. It certainly is. You're at least at a even strength now. And you're pretty much at even strength for the remainder of the five minute major. Quinlan sends it around over to Dumphy. Poking it out, Quinlan, and it is going to be wrapped up by Bond. And Quinlan with some good stick work there to get a good opportunity. We'll have a face-off at 7.18 left to go. So we are at even strength for the next minute 48, and then because of the five-minute major, Silver Lake will have a man advantage for 15 seconds. Backhander Kirk turned away. Kirk, a great job on that faceoff win from his knees. Quinlan's tripped up. We're going to have another call here. And I think the Hillers are going to go. Oh, boy. Well, you get back to even strength and another penalty. We'll send Quinlan to the box. I don't know about that one. What do you I, think? Yeah, I didn't quite catch all of it there. You know, it looked like a good play coming up the boards. If anything, trying to go for the puck to keep it in, not the legs. I'd say they're definitely being a little more picky when it comes to the Hillers yeah. at times. You know, it's when the playoffs is, you kind of want to let them play and really call if it's very obvious. Right. I'd say the refs are a little too involved in this game, need to back off a little bit. Picked up by Dumphy. Sends it up the far side. I understand running a tight ship, but <laughs> gotta let them play. Sent off the protective netting by Cardarelli out of play. The Hillers have a two goal lead, 6.47 left to go in the game. I'm just not sure about the penalty situation anymore at this point. But yeah, just, you know, you gotta be careful. You just, you don't wanna be too careful. It, 
giving up opportunities, but uh, the way they're calling it, you just, you know, you don't want to give up Silver Lake any momentum to get back in this game at all here. It's a man advantage for Silver Lake for the next minute 17. And then they'll, in minute 28, and then they'll have a two-man advantage. Along the near side, or two-man advantage right now, and then man advantage in about a minute and a half. Racing in, out in front, and he couldn't find the puck. It was right between the legs, the skates of Tyler Mason, and Gilbert sends it forward. That was a big break there for the Hillers. If Mason found that puck, that could have been trouble. They made a nice move, but then they said just lost the handle of it. Here comes Solari racing in, looking for a shot. Can't get one off, tripped up. And... Hand pass. We're going to get a hand pass call. We'll have a face-off in Silver Lake territory. Five fifty-nine left to go in this third period. Can the Hillers survive a Silver Lake two-man advantage? One-man advantage for now, but then pretty soon a two-man. Walsh going to play the point here on the five, four on three. Turned away by Barnes along the far side. Kirk trying to take a swing at it. Loose puck, and Walsh gets in there and turns it away. He'll send it up the ice. Yeah, first good play by the stick, break it up, and then got his shin pads on there on the second attempt. Silver Lake back on the attack. Generazzo sends it over. Great play by Barnes there, anticipating that pass, stepping up and sending it all the way down. Able to send it away, and Silver Lake racing back up the ice. Turn away. It's now a two-man advantage. Sent out. Along the near side, picked up by Solari. Back to even. Back to even, excuse Not me. Not too many men here for Silver Lake. Well, perhaps Silver Lake falling apart a little bit. And somebody jumped over the boards a little bit too soon. They got the Hillers for that earlier. You see who's heading to the box. Is anybody going to head to the box? Yeah, I don't. Well, Silver Lake's going to argue, but I don't think the referee's going to overturn the call here. They definitely had six men out there. All kinds of confusion. And no one is uh, heading over to the penalty box yet. So did they reverse it? No, they just there we they go. send somebody in. Jason Benar will head over to the box. Mara on the faceoff. Along the corner. Up around the net, picked up by Dunphy. He'll send it up. Walsh cuts it off. Walsh to Gilbert. Gilbert sends it up and around. Along the near side now. Mira races in there. Sends it over. Rogers and Hamlet trying to get there. Well, there's been a lot of penalties in this game, Eric. It's been crazy. Yeah, there has been, you know, it's really breaking both teams' momentum here in the last period. The Hillers have held their composure nicely. There's a shot turned away off the stick of Mira. Walsh, Gilbert, there was trying to go top shelf there from in front of the net. Had a nice look. And one thing the Hills want to be careful here, no need to force anything. You got the lead. You want to make sure you got at least one man back. Don't give Silver Hill any chances at a break here. Sent around. Along the near side. Rogers digs it out over to Gilbert. Back to Rogers. Gilbert now. Gilbert will race it around. 
Walsh, Mara. Here goes Mara, racing in, trying to leave it out for perhaps Rogers. Yeah. Rogers tripped up, Walsh with a shot, and it is going to be wrapped up by Bond. Yeah, Good save there. But another penalty on Silver Lake for a trip there, so they'll be down two for 13 seconds here. They're gonna give him a slash. Well, the penalty bug's starting to bite the Lakers now. Hamblet on the face-off against Guilford. Timeout here. And we'll have a timeout. 3.16 left to go in the third period. Baylor is clinging on to a 5-3 lead. Only one goal in this third period so far, and that was Kevin Cartarelli with 8.42 left to go. It's been kind of a weird period, Eric. It, it has, you know, just, <laughs> you know, one team thinks they've got, uh, got the momentum and they've got a couple five on threes here, and then it just reverses totally back. Hard for either team to get in their groove going here. But again, for the Hillers, you, know, you get 3.16 left, you got a two goal lead, two men in the box. You're not looking for a goal here. A goal would be nice, but you just want to make sure you keep the puck in their end. Don't give Silver Hill any breakaways, any chance to get another goal to get back in it. But officiating wise, it certainly uh, isn't something you want to see uh, is having the officials get too involved in the game. And at times, right. I feel like they are calling some ticky-tack things yeah, in this Yeah, especially one. in the playoffs. I mean, you, you definitely want to call it if it's egregious, if it's you know something that's going to uh, lead to not getting a goal attempt. But uh, you know, some of them tonight definitely could have been let go and just kind of breaks the momentum of the whole game. Well, so far, so good for the Hillers, despite the couple of questionable penalty calls. Winner of this game will take on Bishop Stang, who defeated Nantucket 5-2, to two, right back here at the Canton Ice House on Sunday, March 1st. And after that, it's the semifinals at the Gallo Arena on March 5th, and then the Sectional championship on March 8th. Gilbert takes a shot. Turned away, diverted to the corner. Mira sends it over to Walsh. Walsh, Gilbert, shot, turned away. Out to the neutral zone it goes. Walsh will pick it up. Less than three minutes left to go. Killers with the man advantage for the next minute, 35 and counting. Rogers sends it back, looking for Hamlet. Mara now. Pops it off the board. A Walsh. Shot. And ended up going off of Rogers. And here comes Silver Lake trying to attack. Guilford. Turned away by Gilbert. Another great defensive play by Gilbert. Yeah. Defense has just been absolutely stellar all night long for the Hillers. Walsh picks it up. Sends it over towards Gilbert. Up and around he goes. Silver Lake with a potential shot here. A little misfire there by Solari. And now here comes on Hopkinton. One. Walsh racing up the ice. Shot wrapped up by Bond. Well, Silver Lake must not have read the book on Walsh there. They uh, had him down low with nobody on him, and he just had all kinds of open ice, which is his mantra. <laughs> Certainly is. Sean Walsh already with a pair of assists today and a goal. 45 seconds left on the Hillers power play. 2-0-1 left in the game. Hillers trying to advance on to the quarterfinals. Kirk squirts it out. Up and around it goes. Jarrett picks it up. He'll send it back. Generazzo meets up along the boards with Quinlan. Sent over towards Weinstock. And here comes Silver Lake, but not for long, as it's turned away by Manser. Quinlan digs it out and wraps it around. Weinstock approaching the corner. Jarrett sends it over just past the reach of Manser. Three seconds left on the Hillers power play. We get a whistle. Gonna go with a deliberate icing, come all the way down to the hill end. Two seconds left on the power play, 118 left in the game. Deliberate offside, I should say. 
Well, once Silver Lake's off the power play, a very good possibility they pull their goalie. Walsh up against Guilford. Yeah, they're going to go right back in the box, right off the faceoff. As the center came up high, right in the face. Tommy Hamlet. Well, they're going to send Guilford to the box, and that is the last thing you possibly wanted to do if you were the Silver Lake Lakers. Yeah, just totally undisciplined there. No need for it. You've got an offensive faceoff, and to come up right into the face of the center off the faceoff is. And I think that might have been a smart. frustration yeah. penalty. You got a 111 left, and you still have a chance at it. So, very undisciplined there by Silver Lake. Walsh on the face off. Walsh coming around, gets a quick shot off, turned away by Bond. He's trying to sneak that in, that little opening. Gilbert gets a shot off. Picked up by Walsh, and we get yet another whistle here. It looks like another penalty. No, I think they're just going to call high stick that he touched it above his shoulders. It looked like it was level, but not quite. So this be a face-off down the hill or in. This face-off comes with 58 seconds left to go in the game. Things are looking good for the Hillers. And Silver Lake going to pull the goalie right here. Well, it was a tough physical matchup today. And Silver Lake certainly, uh, they came to play today. But in the end, the Hillers, they just had the better shooting opportunities and took advantage of yeah. their situations uh, when they had an open look. Yeah, just, you know, I can't say enough about the defense tonight, Tom. You know you're going to get the scoring with the Hellers. They've got the, the three of the top scorers in the Tri-Valley League. Uh, but the defense tonight was what really impressed me. They made some great plays. Silver Lake had some opportunities, and the defense was there all night long, breaking them up. Well, there was a couple instances where Silver Lake was on a power play, and Saperoshitz, Gilbert, we're on defense, and Silver Lake couldn't even get past the neutrals. Zone. Outstanding, yeah, and then followed up right, right after that uh, with Barnes and, and uh, Quintland, and they were just unbelievable. Well, it should be a fun tournament for sure, as it always is in the South Division Three sectionals. And while we have the timeout with 58 seconds left, we'll take you through the bracket as much as we can. So the winner of this game goes on to play Bishop Stang, who defeated Nantucket 5-2. And then the other games of the bracket include Dartmouth against Rockland, Somerset Berkeley against Martha's Vineyard. St. John Paul will take on the winner of Foxborough and Abington, and Norwell will take on the winner of Hanover and North Quincy. The Foxborough-Abington game is actually going on right here at the Canton Ice House just across from us. Along the near side, Hamlet racing up the ice. 45 seconds left, an empty net for Silver Lake. It's a two goal Hillers lead. Dunphy sends it over. Rogers, shot, turned away by Dunphy. Good defensive play there, 30 seconds left. Gilbert, his shot will be turned away by Dunphy. Dunphy sacrificing his body to Keep a comeback, a small possibility. Gilbert jammed up along the backboards. Walsh gets in there, gets the stick on it. Rogers trying to get to it, as well as Hamlet, sent over by Dunphy. Up in the Hillers territory, one second, and that'll do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are moving on to the quarterfinals as they Close it out and get the 5-3 to three win over Silver Lake. Well, it was a physical game, a gritty game. But as you said, Eric, the defense for the Hillers was absolutely incredible. And they prevented the Silver Lake team from taking advantage of many power play possibilities because there were certainly a lot of well, Hillers penalties exactly. in this game. Yeah, that, that's what you just call it. A team win. Uh, that you know, the offense play great, defense play great. Gray Bailey, awesome in net. It's a solid all-around game for the Hillers there. It shows what the, they've been doing all year long and why they deserve to be here. Well, the Hillers improved to 21 and 0 overall. Silver Lake will end their season with 10 wins, 10 losses, and two ties. Congratulations to Silver Lake on a great season, and congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers. We're advancing on to the quarterfinals round 
of this South Division III sectional bracket. A fun game here tonight as the Hillers take down Silver Lake 5-3 and move on into postseason. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Eric Carty, I'm Tom Nappy. The final score for the final time. Hopkinton moves on in the postseason, taking down Silver Lake 5-3. That is going to do it. You have been watching Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Playoff Hockey on HCAM. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Good night, everybody.